पदम शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवतनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमत्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम गुकारस्वंधकारो वै ऋकारस्व निवर्तक अंधकार निरोधिवात्धीयते सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्यमध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीरक वहै तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मदिषा वहै ओ शातिशा नम श्री शंकरानंद गुरुपादुजन्मने सविलास महामोह ग्राह ग्रासकर्मणे so as the verse says my namaskara to to uh, my guru who is who has really one job graha ese ek ek karmane only one job is not multiple things it's just one and that job is to loosen the hold of this crocodile that has taken me that has just taken a hold of me and would not let go and and he can do this job in a very gentle manner he doesn't have to take out a sword or a gun to kill the the crocodile but through his magic of his brahma vidya he can make the crocodile just relax enough so that i can i can be free from it this is the prayer so here i remember some chinmanand used to say this he says you know sometimes uh, in the supposing there is a flood in the river ganga and a person uh, uh, gets swept into the water and it's dark and you are barely swimming you're not a very good swimmer you're just barely keeping on the surface of a very fast moving ganga and all of a sudden you find something which is uh which looks like a log of wood and you get hold of the wood and you say wow now i can at least uh just uh, just not drown anymore i can just float on the on the water with the help of this um black log well it turns out it's not a black log it's a crocodile and the crocodile says wow what a lucky break for me a live person that i can eat so it crow catches catches hold of the uh, and so the man is also holding on to the crocodile and the crocodile also takes his arm and puts it in his teeth so now you can the man cannot say oh my gosh i made such a mistake no 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 let me go because i thought you were a log it's too late crocodile says your mind now i cannot let you go have a story i remember from it chinman and ji used to say that uh, a more modern story is not a modern but more prevalent story is there was um, there was a shishya that went to a guru and said uh, swami ji please teach me how to how to do vairagya i want to really give up the hold of the world towards me and i just want to uh, can you teach me how to do it so the teacher said okay i'll teach you but let's go for a walk so shishya said sure sir let's go for a walk so the teacher and the student both went for a walk and all of a sudden the teacher 
sees a huge tree with uh, you know skin which is gnarled it's not very smooth uh, we have a uh, uh, I think somebody was saying that one of the trees on our property is 200 years old oak and the skin there is very rough so this teacher uh, embrace the the in the tree and said wow what a majestic tree you are what a wonderful tree you are and so the student was looking at him and saying oh that's interesting then the teacher said let me go let go i want to just uh, not embrace you anymore let go the student kept looking at him and saying sir what are you saying you can let go the tree is not holding you you let go just let go the teacher said that's exactly my lesson to you you can let go with the proper with the proper understanding and so on you can let go so anyway this is the prayer so let's start uh, with the uh, uh, with a review of the panchadashi after that uh, after that prayer so each of us born as human beings are we have a natural desire for three main things and those are i want the world to be stable and one that i can deal with predictably i find that the world is unpredictable and it is unstable and that bothers me we try to arrange for the world to at least give me some temporary stability and predictability this is how we get married we think now my life will become more stable more predictable and it might for a short amount of time but the world is too vast and too powerful and too unpredictable for this small amount of stability to last it's not going to happen so i am continuously bothered by the fact that my basic desire for stability is not being fulfilled so this is one the second one is that my sense of wisdom and awareness my my knowledge should be stable unchanging predictable and it's not i don't know enough about the world to cope up with it what i did know at one time is slipping away from me and perhaps the most important thing what i do know is not very useful to me so there is a sense of change and unpredictability but an unpredictability about my awareness my knowledge that bothers me i cannot just be a changeless in terms of my awareness and my awareness also my my mind my knowledge etc keeps on changing so this is number 2 but i think perhaps the most important one 
is the third one where my quest for ananda, for joy, is unpredictable and unstable and changing. I can't, I cannot, um, uh, there, there, is, there is a small segment where it may be under my control. Like for instance, if I am really unhappy about things, then I can always take out a couple of scoops of Hagen Dazs from the refrigerator and enjoy the ice cream for five minutes. So that's about it. There's nothing much that I can do other than these small amounts of control and predictability of my sukham. Mostly it is unpredictable. And what I find is that no matter how hard I try, I cannot really rely on a, a, a sequence of things that will give me predictable sukham. Again, small changes here and there I can make. If I make more money, then I'm a little bit more stable, but not very long and not very much. And so, this is also a source of bother, bother for moderation for me. That on one hand, I cannot find things that are stable. I cannot find awareness and knowledge which is stable. And I cannot find sources of sukham. So sukham here is a very interesting word in Sanskrit. So it consists of a prefix called su, which stands, it's a short form of what is called sushtu. So sushtu means lots of. It's also a modification. It is not a swarupa, but it is it is not, it's kind of like, it's not like it's, it's uh, sugar. But it is a sweet cookie. So sweet cookie is sushtu sugar. It is not the swarupa, but it has plenty of sugar in it. It is called sushtu. Come. stands for Brahman, Paramatma, Kam Brahman. It is said in our, our Upanishads, Kam Brahma. So Kam means the Swarupa. So that means, in terms of the example of the sugar, it is the sugar itself. It is not modified, mixed in. But the sushtu sukham means sukham means it is it is very sugary, very sweet. It's called sukham. The opposite of that is called dukham. So the duk the duhu means very little, or you can even say bitter. Opposite of that. So dukham means there is some kham, but it is mixed in with so many things that I cannot taste it. This is called dukham. So dukham means all the problems in life, sorrow. Sukham means pleasures of life, happiness. So when I look at both sukham and dukham in our lives, what we find is they just come up without any warning. They just come up by itself. 
Sukham also, not as much as Dukham, but Sukham also comes. So, winning a lottery, and nobody really expected this person to get six different digits straight, six different numbers. Got it. All of a sudden, billion dollars. And that's of course a special case, but in our lives what we find is, Sukham comes without our asking. Dukham comes without our asking more often. So both of them are unpredictable. And how long the Sukham will last, we don't know. It doesn't last very much. How long the Dukham will last also, we don't know. On the 2nd of July, I had gone to a get-together, a large get-together. And for the first time in two and a half years, I caught a real cold. It had not happened since I came back from India in January of 2020 when I had pneumonia. And as you know, I am I not, not as you know, but I'm very prone to... Uh, uh, to asthma and a simple cold turns into a federal case and then I have uh, all kinds of complications. This time it has lasted one month. I must have seen four or five doctors. I've been given one antibiotic. I'm still not well. And I'm better than before but this has just dogged me. Just out of it came for nothing. All, all by itself and lasted for this long, changed some of my daily routines and so on. So Sukha Dukkham is, is going to come unpredictably. So now if we can put all these three things together, this is our life. We are looking for stability either outside, or oh, this is the interesting thing, the stability is neither outside nor what I take myself to be, which is a human being. You take yourself to be a human being, this is a very big thing. That means you have a head and there are problems with the head. That means you have a torso there are problems with the torso. That means you have a mind, there are problems with the mind. The whole structure is full of issues and problems and so on. This is what I take myself to be. Unpredictable. Unacceptable. Un, 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 unchanging. Changing completely. So not only the outside, my own self completes changing. And of course we grow old. And then we have to give up. So this is our life. So it is really remarkable that in all these things I am missing something which is totally a surprise. A shock really, a very pleasant shock, such a shock that I cannot really, cannot even fathom it. And if you really then analyze it, which we have done before and we will do it again, if you really analyze it, nothing which is away from you can give you the stability and truth and unchangingness. Nothing. If there is a source of stability and truth and unchangingness, it has to be you. If there is, and there is, you are really the source of stability. You are not Satswarupam. But this is such a such a shock that I cannot easily accept it. I cannot accept it. 
that I am so used to finding stability outside of me. The most I can hope for is that my health remains stable for a short amount of time, that the world remains stable and doesn't bother me for a short amount of time. This is how much our, uh, our, our expectations are, how limited our expectations are. You ask anybody in the life, what if you were very stable? And the person will say, for how long? 60 years, 70 years. And the world also doesn't bother you? 60, 70 years? You know what? The person will sign on a piece of paper and says, done. But it's not possible. That's about the extent of it. This is what is called avadhi. Avadhi means the very the very, um, uh, the very extent of it. I can't even do that. Leave aside the fact that my whole Swarupa is Ananda, Swarupa is Sat and so on. Unthinkable. Cannot even conceive of it. So this is where the Shastra has its work cut out for it. And the Shastra knows this. It says that it's not going to be easy for this person to accept this very unlikely scenario, no matter how hard we try. So it is not the fault of the Shastra, because the Shastra sees a very clear picture of who you are and says, don't you know that you are the very source of the things that you are seeking? It knows that. But it also knows that, that I will say, mm, I don't know about that. So it's got its job cut out. And it knows that and it says, I, that's okay. We'll go slowly. We'll go slowly. So this is where they say that, um, you know, this is very beautiful if you really look at the, um, the nature of the teaching and so on. And you begin to see the insights given by Acharyas on these things. What they say is that as an example of the work cut out for the Shastra. That's the example I'm going to give you, some examples. What it says is that it starts with the fact that the world began. There is a birth, there is a sustenance, and there is a dissolution. Later on, in advanced teaching, it says there is no birth, no sustenance, no, no dissolution, nothing. There was never a case where it was born. Never a case where it is sustaining. Never a case where it will dissolve. This is just a superimposition that just appears without any, any, any beginning. Here in the um, example of the, uh, of the dream, in uh, Aparoksha Anubhuti, the, uh, a very nice uh, commentary by Swami Akhandananda, which I've been reviewing for a while. I'm kind of rediscovering his, and it's really my own fault that I was not experienced enough to understand his teaching before. Um, I'll talk more about that in much more detail. But he gives a very beautiful example. You know, he says, and in fact, this is there in the Anubhuti, in the uh, uh, in Aparoksha Anubhuti itself. So it's not as though the commentator is starting on it. The, the text itself says it, but it is explained very well by the commentator, Swami Akhandananda. So the book, uh, Prokshana Bhuti says, quite late in the book, there is no prarabdha karma. 
There is no prarabdha karma. There is no karma, there is no prarabdha karma. Now wait a second. All this time you have been saying prarabdha karma, prarabdha karma, one which has already begun, the one that you need to accept, the one that you can uh, you cannot do kamya karma, but prarabdha karma, just uh, don't worry about it, just keep doing it. You've been saying that for a long time, didn't you? Now you're saying there is no prarabdha karma. So this is an example where the, uh, the Shastra has to go slowly. It cannot suddenly say there is no prarabdha karma. Because I won't even... Why is it flashing? Is it stable? It looks like it. It was flashing for a while. So, if, if the Shastra says there is no prarabdha karma from the very beginning, nirvikalpoham, nirakaraha, I will not accept it. I won't not even, even study further because it is so against my own experience that I would say, I don't know what they are talking about. So just to get you accustomed to it, at first it says, Prarabdha Karma is there. Later on, there is no Prarabdha Karma. See, because in this Aparokshanabhuti, it points out that look at the example of a, a Swapna, of a Swapna Vastha means your uh, dream state. So in the dream state, what happens is that you have a lot of very meaningful activities going on. You are talking to people, you are, you are uh, fighting, you are disappointed, you are happy, you are looking for alternatives. There is a very complicated plot that you you uh, utilize to manufacture the, the, the setup of the dream. We all know that. That's our experience. Every one of us. Now, supposing you see a, a young person in the dream who is, you know, 16, 17 years of age, and you're discussing where are you going to college? Like we are doing it with our our oldest granddaughter now. She's now turned 16 and now we are starting to think about, not we are, she's starting to think about college and we are asking her, what college are you thinking of? What subjects do you want? All those kinds of things. So in the dream also that can come because whatever your subjects are in your your waking state, can also be transferred into the stream. So supposing in the dream, you, you're talking to a dream character. You are also a dream character and you're talking to a dream, another dream character. Now the question is, what is the birth of that dream character? When was that dream character born? A dream character was not born, then how come you are taking it so seriously and you are talking to that person? Well, I, I don't know, it's just, that's just a dream. But the dream experience is very real at that time. You are having a meaningful conversation with this young person. And yet there is no prarabdha, there is no janma, no mrityu, no nothing. It is just a superimposition upon yourself, brought about by the machinations of your own mind. In our life, it is exactly the same thing. Really speaking, the prarabdha karma is only there for the vyavaharika sat, not for the paramarthika sat. 
So for a Paramarthika Sat, a Jeevan Mukta, one who has understood this whole thing very well, that I am not this body-mind complex, I am the very Sakshi, one that is very clearly understood, there is no Prarabdha Karma. There is no Prarabdha Karma. There may be Prarabdha Karma from other standpoint, but it is complete freedom. So this is an example where the Shruti has its work cut out. And so I think I can summarize by saying that um, it finds that the average person is very difficult to convince. But doesn't mean it's impossible, it is just difficult. And so, just like this teacher who was hugging the tree, if it decides to let go of the tree, the tree will let go of the person. And so we need to just let go. It is just make-believe is really what it is. And one can say that, you know, it's easy for you to say and so on. It's neither easy nor difficult. It's a fact that you have to embrace. And the more you look at the factual part of it, the faster it will happen to you. But in any way, um, the, all the long dissertations, all the arguments, all the logical constructs are all given by the teachers and the texts so that you gradually take one step at a time. And at the very end of that, there is a saying, Aha! Oh my goodness, there is nothing going on. I am complete. So, it has to go through this in uh, has to go through these intermediate steps and so on. So um, we will see this in the Panchadashi. So. The, let us look at the structure of the Panchadashi. So, there are 15 chapters, as the name suggests, a book of 15 chapters. And in this book, the three the three mistakes I make about myself are all taken up very systematically. And the three mistakes are, as you know, I started the class with this. One is, I want stability. And I want complete awareness of the stability. Like for instance, you know, at night time when you are asleep, you have stability. You are in fact independent of any problems. It's a fact. But you know what? You don't know it until you get up in the morning. And I'll, I'll accept it conditionally for the time being, provisionally, not conditionally. I'll accept it provisionally for the time being that yes, yes, I had, I slept well. But I want to be aware of the fact that I don't have any problems, that I am, I am free of problems. I want to be aware of that, and I'm not. You know, the sleep, I'm engulfed with, with, um, with complete ignorance. So the Karana Sharira is still there. So the Karya Sharira is gone, but the Karana Sharira is still there, which means that I cannot, Karana Sharira means the sense of ignorance about myself, is still there. 
This is why you get up in the morning and you don't say, my nature is free. You don't say that. You can say, I slept well. That was a nice interlude. That's about all you can say. That's nothing more. So, so the second part is, not only do I want stability, I also want awareness of that stability. Chitswarupoham. This is what I also want. And then the most important thing I want is I want predictability of my sukham. I find that this predictability of sukham comes in two stages. So the first stage is that I am told about the logic of where sukham comes from. Because right now, the sukham is so unpredictable, it can come from anywhere and disappear from at anywhere. You can get hold of it. And so much so that I am now conditioned to accept it. So as I was saying earlier, the most I can hope for is that I am somewhat, that the Sukham is a little bit more predictable. That's about it. So the first stage of this understanding of, 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 the, un, of the predictability of Sukham is that it is possible. Because I don't even know if it is possible. And so the Shastra first has to go slowly and, and convince you that it is, it is systematically possible. That itself is a great relief. Even though I haven't found how I'm going to be, or what's the, that I'm the very Swarupa of the Sukham, but just the fact that it is possible to be make it relatively predictable itself is a very big thing. So that's the first stage. So one can say this is what is called Paroksha Gyanam, Brahman Asti, Anandam Asti. Then the next stage is, you know that Ananda is none other than you. This is a huge step. I can even accept that the first stage is that Anandam Asti. Because right now my step is, I'm at the ground floor which says I have no idea where Ananda comes from. Other than some very simple things like eating ice cream and stuff. And the fried thing, samosa. That's it. Couple of things here and there, that's it. Chutney. But the real source of Ananda, I don't even know it exists. So once it is told, the face first stage is Ananda Asti. Source Asti, there is logical. That's a great relief. Then slowly, because the, because the Shastra cannot suddenly say you are the Ananda. It says it, but it doesn't do anything to me, because I am not ready to accept it. This is too big a jump. Swami Paramatananda had given this example. I remember when I was teaching Bhagavad Gita, I think 6th or 5th or 6th cha chapter, uh, and I was consulting some of the notes from Swami Paramatananda. He was saying that if you want to, you're asked to come to the stage. And the stage is 3 feet high. And unless you are a very young person, who's very athletic, jumping from the floor of the, of the hall to the stage which is three foot high or four foot high, not possible. So 
So exactly in the same way, the fact that you are the Brahman is the stage. And I'm not ready to, uh, to jump on it. I can't. So some steps have to be provided. One step at a time. This is what we were talking about, prarabdha karma. One step at a time. First you say, Adi, Sthiti, and Prayala, Pralaya Asti. Then, in the more advanced stages, as we saw in the uh, Mandukya Karika, where it says, Anadihi, Atma is Anadihi. It was never born. And what appears to be born is really just a superimposition, just like in the dream. There is no real birth to it. This is the more advanced understanding. But you cannot have that advanced understanding unless your mind has been softened at one stage at a time. So anyway, going back to uh, the structure of, uh, of uh, Panchadashi, so it has it has a systematic uh, systematic teaching to address all three of our doubts. And just like the Bhagavad Gita, uh, these are very experienced teachers. These are very, the authors of these are very very wise and experienced in how they want to present the material. So it is not, like in Bhagavad Gita also, each chapter is self-contained in itself. So you will see in Bhagavad Gita that you have jnanam, you have bhakti, and you have karma in almost all the chapters. But it doesn't mean that all the chapters are the same. There is in fact a certain highlighting of one or the other in each of the chapters. So similarly in the Bhagavad Gita also, as you know, the first six chapters is Tvampada Vakya. Tvampada, Tvampada Artha. Then the second one is Tatpada Artha. And the third chap- six chapters is Asipada Artha. Aikyam between them. So there is a There is a structure of it, but for each chapter, it doesn't mean that it only talks about Tvam, no Ishwara. And in the second one, only Ishwara, no Tvam, no you. Tvam means you, in the individual. It doesn't happen. It's it's all subtly done. Panchadashi is exactly the same way. So the first five chapters... The highlighting is the Sat analysis. What analyzing the nature of the changing versus the unchanging. Sat Swarupaha. Because that's what I want. My first desire is that I want some stability of, of things. This is the Satsvarupa. This is given in the first five chapters. Then in the next five chapters, it is Chitsvarupa. It's about Jnanam. And not only the Chit, Sat is also brought in, but the emphasis, as I said earlier, the highlighting of it is really Chitsvarupa. And um, in the um, third section, which is now we are going to take up, Panchadashi does the analysis of Sukham, of Ananda. And um, here, as we will see, the unpredictability is analyzed. How it is caused is analyzed. 
And the more we follow the teaching of the next five chapters, we will begin to appreciate that Sukha Dukkha are not unpredictable completely. They have semblance of unpredictability, but by and large they have a pattern that I should recognize. And so much so that at the end of that, I am ready to accept the fact that I am the very source of the Ananda. This is the final stage. So this is the um, this is the structure of uh, of Panchadashi that we will follow. And so the the underlying similarity of all three Satswarupam, Chitswarupam and Ananda Swarupam. The similarity of the analysis of all three has to do with the fact that I am making a mistake in all three cases by focusing on the Karya, not the Karana. Karya means the effect. And Karana means the cause. I am too focused on the Karya at this point. And that is what is causing the problems for me. The typical example given is that a youngster who, so you know, we've taken this example of a young girl who is shopping around for some jewelry to wear. Here, in the case of when in, in the Indian system, when the when this girl, which is who is about to become a woman shops around for jewelry for her wedding. Her entire focus is on the jewelry, not on the underlying gold or any other metal. She's purely looking at the design. And there are arguments between the mother and the girl, daughter. The mother says, listen, this is a classic design. It never goes out of fashion. And the youngster says, I don't care. This is not how things are really perceived these days. Nobody likes these kinds of things. Have you ever seen anybody else doing this? And the mother says, no, but then you have to be much more traditional because it will come back. All those kinds of arguments go back and forth, back and forth and so on. In all of this, really, the very nature of the gold, is it 18 carat, it is 22 carats, is it good, is it predictable, how much gold is there, is not there at all. So very similarly to that is the situation in our life, is that I am very involved with the various, the various changes in the world, the very the very vikaras, the very shape of it, the connections between people, guna, sattva guna and all those other gunas, good and the bad and uh, difficult and easy, all those kinds of things. I'm so involved with that, that if somebody comes along and says, do you know what these things are made out of? They are made out of you, the Atma. And all these changes that are, you are witnessing and experiencing, even though at the time of the experience and witnessing and so on, you are still there. Did you know that? 
And I'll say, what me? I don't understand what you're talking about. This is the issue. I have no concept about the fact that I am in and through all my experiences. I'm changing. My mind's drishti, my mind's ability to absorb this knowledge is not there. But it's a fact. So, the common basis for all three of these, sat, chit and ananda, is to turn the attention towards the basis of all changes, which is nothing but Ishvara, which is nothing but Brahman, which is nothing but Paramatma, which is nothing but Jivatma. And at this point, this is so far from my appreciation that these are just words that I can't grasp. So that is the common uh, methodology for bringing out the truth in, in all of these uh, teachings. And um, so we will now look into the last five chapters of the um, Panchadashi. So here it's interesting that uh, the first ten chapters of the Panchadashi each has a unique name. Okay, each each one has a unique name. The last five chapters are different. They only have a single name. So you can ask, how can five chapters have a single name? There must be some, you can say chapter 11, number 12 and so on. So, it is has a sub-name and the name is like in the... Uh, 11 is called Yogananda in Brahmananda. Brahmananda is the overall name of all five chapters and the first chapter in that subset of five chapters is called Yogananda in Brahmananda. Second one is called Atmananda in Brahmananda. So the Brahmananda is common. But the sub-names are different. And there is a reason for it that we will discuss later. Third one, number 13, is Advaitananda. Fourth one is Vidyananda. And the fifth one is Vishayananda. Yogananda, Atmananda, Advaitananda, Vidyananda and Vishayananda. All together, there are 429 verses. 11 has 134, number 12 has 90, number 13 has 105, number 14 has 65, number 15 is 35, and altogether 429 verses. This is a big task. How are we going to do this? I was just thinking that if I do two verses a day, usually I only do one and a half or one or so. Like in the last class, I just did Namach Sri Shankarananda, only one verse. So supposing I speed up and I do two of them, that means I need 215 days to cover these five chapters. So that means five years, four, maybe four and a half years. I don't know where we will be, where I will be in four and a half years. I don't think we have the time to do so. So I have a um, challenge on, our, on my hand and all of us have a challenge on our hand. And I'm not quite sure how we're going to do. Uh, this may be a very 
uh, ambitious task on our hand. But somehow I feel that uh, if we do this right, then we can focus in on the key concepts contained in these five chapters, bring them together so that they they kind of hand, hang, hang together. So you can review all of it. Even though I won't do all the verses, but at least hopefully I will do all the important concepts in those five chapters. And then you can, um, if you wish to study this further on your own, uh, you can actually they do all the, all the verses uh, together if you want to do that way. But I think in our case, uh, I think personally it will be a minimum of one year, if not more so. Uh, let us see how it goes. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to look forward to it. Now in terms of the text itself, the number of places where uh, Panchadashi is available not in commentary form but in just the verse and its meaning. Uh, lots of books are available and uh, what I would like to ask you is that uh, you can please give me, just like we did in the Shankarananda's Gita with uh, Nanjunda's, Nanjunda's Somayaji's very good suggestion of finding the digital version. So if you can uh, let me know what, what you are able to find on the uh, net, then uh, we can broadcast it to the others. And so you can at least have a copy of the verses and its translation, uh, not the commentary per se. And of course, primarily I'm going to be um, relying on Swami Maheshanandji's commentary. Uh, which is given in the fourth book. There are four books. So this fourth book covers chapters 11 through 15. And so I will summarize uh, his excellent commentary on, on, uh, on each one of these. And we will go from there. So I don't really have a text to show you. I think when we did uh, chapter 11 uh, two, three years ago, uh, there was some reference to a book that I had made. I'll have to look to see what, what it was. Uh, if you can remind me, please do so. Uh, so there are some books available in the Panchadashi is quite well known. Um, translations may not be, I mean, uh, commentaries may not be there, but the translations will be there, both in vernacular languages as well as uh, other languages. There is a... Um, a short commentary written by uh, Ramakrishna. So this is not the Ramakrishna Paramahansa. This is a Ramakrishna who was a first disciple, direct disciple of Vidyaranyaji. So he has written a uh, commentary and I have a book on that. It's not very it doesn't give a lot of explanation. It's rather short, but uh, it's there if you want to look at the Ramakrishna uh, commentary, very short commentary, it is there. So anyway, with that, um, I will uh, wind up this class. That is what we are going to do. So I think it will be enjoyable. I think we'll have a lot of fun with this. So with that, um, I will uh, wind up the class. And there is another reason that I'm not taking any more time. Uh, so let me um, say a prayer and close the class. And then I will uh, tell you what the other reason is in a minute. Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Purnamadaf Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate 
ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಸೊ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ in um, one of the two recent classes either the saturday class or the tuesday class i'm not sure which one that one idea i thought we could pursue as part of this teaching is that uh, as you know there's there really up you don't really have a lot of questions about the subject matter that was just talked about in the in this class each class you have some questions but they're not not really in depth questions per se so what i thought we should do is that if you can send me some questions by email and they don't have to pertain to a particular class that i have taught it could be any one that you have come through but it's something that you don't have an answer for and you want to get some ideas about the answers for that and please send me an email and i think what we will do is focus on the answers to that question in this in this question and answer session and uh, at least try to get a little bit more in depth about that question so it so happens that um, last week one of our students panna bhuva sent me a question and so today i thought what we would do is just focus in on answer answer to her question and um, what i will do is um, let me kind of give an answer as as best as i can and then um, i will open up the laptop to see if she has some for the clarifications or for the question so we'll focus in on her question and then also if others can have some questions i would look at that as well but this would be not a general um answer to your questions but a particular one based on a is a question sent to me prior to uh this time so i have some idea of what's it so with that let me let me tell you what her question is so she belongs to a study group that is studying um aparoksha anubhuti okay and i asked her uh, about this where where did she where on what question and she said it's verse number 26 so and the verse number 26 goes like this niramaya nirabhasa nirvikalpa aham atatah ನಾಹಂ ದೇಹ ಅಸಿ ಅಸದ್ರೂಪ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ಬುಧೈ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅಪರೋಕ್ಷ ಅನುಭೂತಿ ನಾವು ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ಹರ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅ ವರ್ಡ್ ನಿರಾಭಾಸ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಗಿವನ್ ವಾಸ್ and i think there was a couple of uh, lectures that uh, uh panna and the group is i think either swami paramarthananda or sarmatma priya or one of the others i don't know which one so let me repeat it in context to a word nirabhasa the explanation given was that mind can comprehend a thing by forming a corresponding vritti yeah true forming a corresponding vritti vritti means a particular formful thought it's called vritti brahman is known by brahma aakara vritti by the mind brahman is known by a vritti called brahma aakara vritti by the mind i am still trying to figure out what is that vritti 
Brahma Akara Vitti. If it is self revealing in the mind, then is the small I present to know it? If this, on the other hand, if the small I is resolved, who knows? Could you please explain? Okay, so I hope that um, is clear that Brahman, as the Shastra says, is indeed known by Brahma Akara Vritti. And she wants to find out what is that because Brahman is attributeless. There's no attributes to his nirvikalpaha, nirakaraha, nirabhasaha. So how can the mind form that vritti? If it is self-revealing in the mind, then is the small I present to know it? And if the small I is not there because it is already resolved, then who knows? This is her question. This is an important question which uh, I think we come across sooner or later in our study, the Brahma Akara Vritti. The Brahma Akara Vritti is more popularly known as Akhanda Akara Vritti. Generally speaking, you will see reference to what is called Akhanda Akara Vritti. So Akhanda means one which is divisionless, a form of a mind which is divisionless. So then the question becomes, how can the mind which itself is a, uh, a very small portion of the whole thing comprehend this huge Akhanda Akara Vritti? This is the question. So uh, the way I would respond to that, Panna and others, is to take an example and to try to understand the example and, and find that really this is very true. There is no question about that. What is taught by the Shastra, Shastra never really has any doubts. There is no ambiguity. There is no, uh, no dosha, no defect. It is absolutely the same way. Now the question is, how do we grasp it? So let's take an example. So the example is that of, we are already familiar with that, is the example of a room space. Or in the very popular annals of Shastra called Ghatakasha. So Ghata, ghata means a a clay pot. And so usually you will find that uh, uh, because the unpredictability of water and to keep it cool, all the villages have a huge um, clay pot, huge plot like this and uh, water is filled with it. So this is called ghatta. So if the water is not there, then the space within the ghatta is called ghatta kasha. Or the normal thing we can think about is that of a room, room space. Okay. Now, the room space, it, if the space has Consciousness as its Swarupa. You see, the space that we are aware of is Jada. It is, oh, it is uh, inert. It has a lot of qualities like it has all these subtle uh, powers. It has the powers that can give rise to, to air, to fire, water, all of that, it is the very, it is the very source of all the changes. Nevertheless, it is jada, it is inert, isn't it? 
But suppose you believe, suppose you imagine that this Akasha is a conscious Akasha. This is what is called Chidakasha. Chit plus Akasha is called Chidakasha. Okay, so let's just assume that. So supposing there is a conscious space. Now in the conscious space, all kinds of things are included in it, including ignorance. Okay? See, because everything is the Akasha is what would be called Param. Param means that it is, it is beyond all particular things. Everything which is particular is contained in the Akasha. It is not outside of the Akasha. Right? So the Akasha is Param. And so, if there is a Chidakasha, then included in the Chidakasha is also ignorance, is also included. All right, so this is Chidakasha. Now let's take up room space. So the room space now has some gunas. The Chidakashaha is does not have these gunas as limitations. It is Sarvagataha, it is Purnaha, it is Param. But a room space, room akasha, room space has some very particular gunas. One of them is it may have ignorance, self-ignorance. Okay. In addition to that, it takes erroneously all the things that can happen in the room to be happening to it. Like supposing there is smoking in the room and there is smoke in the room. Then imagine that the conscious room space will say, oops, is somebody smoking in me? Why does it happen? Supposing there is an earthquake and the walls are shaking, the room space feels I am very vulnerable. I may fall down. Supposing it is darkness in the room. The sun has not come out and no one has switched the lights off. The room space is going to say, I, it is very dark in here. Similarly, it can say it is smelly. It is noisy. So you have lots of different gunas, qualities that are taken by the room space to be mine. That's mine. Okay, all right, so there a teacher comes along and says, I appreciate all the experiences because you can, uh, supposing there is a teacher space, the room space and this, uh, this particular room space is complaining that, you know, I'm very vulnerable, there's all these kinds of things happening to me and so on. And the teacher 
the teacher room space says, wait a second. You really think these things are happening to you? He says, yes, of course. The walls are falling on me. And there is so much dust. And it's dark in here. Teacher can say, wait, 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 wait. Do you know this is not true? Say, what do you mean it's not true? Of course it is true. Don't you also feel the same way? He says, no, I don't feel that same way. Why not? Because I know that I am the Chidakasha. You are the Chidakasha? And the teacher room space says, not only I, but you are also the Chidakasha. You are free. You are limitless. And nothing can sully you. So the room space thinks about it and has questions about it, has doubts about it. And it says, then how come I was feeling this way? If I am the room space, if I am, I'm sorry, if I am the Chidakasha, if I am the total space, how come I feel that I am the room space? Ignorance. Just ignorance. And if you think about it, and the room space thinks about it, and thinks about it, and thinks about it, and ruminates on it, and meditates on it, slowly a smile comes to the face. He says, Oh my God, I am the total space. Nothing encloses me. I am free. This is called a total space vritti. Initially it was room space vritti vritti vritti. Room space, room space, room space. With all its enclosures and so on. But now the vritti is totally different. And the room, the room space vritti is destroyed by the total space vritti. But it has to be a vritti. That thought has to occur to the room space. Because just by being the total space, there is no distraction of the room space vritti. You see, this is important. Just by being the Atma, it is not, not necessary that your sense of limitation will go away. What will go away is an opposite vritti to the room space vritti. And it has to come from teaching. Because the very, the very, uh, the very conclusion is false. And then you can say, oh my goodness. So that is a thought. When that thought occurs, it destroys the opposite thought that I am just a room space. So here, Brahma Akara Vritti, Akhanda Akara Vritti is a Positive thought, that my goodness, I am Satsvarupoham. I am Chitsvarupaha, Satyam Jnanam Anantam. I cannot change. I cannot. I am self contained. Swatasiddha, Swayam Jyotihi, Ananda Swarupaha. These are the thoughts that I have to have. Because that is true. Because until I have those thoughts, 
akhanda akara vritti i cannot destroy the other thought which i am just a limited person and then the room space it remains the same but now the jnanam is based on chidakasha not ghatakasha this is what happens so all these doubts about you know if i am not there then it is formless and so on is meaningless this is exactly what happens this is what is called akhanda akara vritti so anyway i hope that is somewhat clear and uh, i will now open up the laptop to see if panna has any follow up questions or somebody else has anything and uh, we will uh, somehow i'm not looking at the right one sorry it was the last class so this is the one i should be looking at because until i Okay good panna looks like you accepted the explanation if you have any further questions please let me know i and i also would uh, uh, offer it that if similarly if you have other questions that you want to uh, bring up to the table please call just send me an email ahead of time so that would be good to do um So Anjali has said English translation and notes by Swami Swahananda. And um, Anjali, if you can send me an email with, if it's digitally available, then we can send it out to the uh, WhatsApp group to everyone. So we can do that. Virendra Singh says, "Knowing and being method to be, just listening and meditating on it. That's all. All right. If there's no other questions, then um, I will close the class, and we will hopefully see you next week. Oh."